Well, I'm Larry West uh, with uh, Good Shepherd in Colleyville, too. And uh, yeah, I wanted to tell you a little bit of story how we went from six guys to 60 guys on a Saturday morning praying rosary, talking about faith, having fellowship with one another. That's why they wanted me to come up here. Um, Al Cresta mentioned something that reminded me. There's a line of, uh, um, Houston, we have a problem. We're really supposed to say, what, what are we actually supposed to say? Jesus, we have a problem. That's one of my favorite lines in that movie. Another one is, uh, shortly after that, the men start bickering about whose fault it is that things are going wrong. You know, you did this, you turned that, you did that stuff. And Lowell turns to them, and this is actually what he said, according to uh, the book, etc., was, Gentlemen, what are your intentions? It comes a time when you come to a conference like this, there comes a time in your faith where you say, what are your intentions? I remember <laughs> one of the stories that gets me that I, that I like about this, and I got, you know, uh, heaven forgive me for this, but it's one of the few times that I, one of the only times I know in Scripture when Jesus was kind of a smart aleck. Maybe it was more than once, but please forgive me for this. Uh, it's in John 6, 66, where there, the only case where the apostles walked away, where there was, not apostles, but there were disciples that walked away, after they walk away, Jesus turns to them and says, and what of you? Will you also leave? It's almost like well, you want to let the, good, you know, the door hit you where the good Lord splits you. I mean, he's saying it to them. And, Jesus, and Peter answers like we should answer. Lord, to whom else shall we go? Where else can we go? Do you remember 24 hours ago or last week? You're like, well, maybe I have time for this conference. Maybe I don't. Do you remember that feeling? Maybe I should be here. Has this conference uplifted you? Can I get an amen? Amen. Has this conference made you stronger? Amen. amen. I know I'm dealing with Catholics. I'm trying to be Tim Staples a little bit here. You know? Have you enjoyed hearing the speakers? Amen. amen. Would you like to um, take these speakers with you? You know, everywhere you go. Would you? Amen. Well, all you got to do is buy these shirts and then you can... And these books are great. They still have those things out there. So I'm still trying to follow up. Doug Berry's example and say there's still a chance for you to do that. But what about taking these 700 men with you everywhere you go? You don't have to wait for the next conference. Have a conference of your own every week. A fellowship group is the continuance of this. That's what it's about. And so often we talk about who's going to do that and who's going to do that at our parish. And, and uh, you know, if we're going to be disciples, like, Chris, uh, like uh, Rick just said, we have to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow. Like, that's what Christ says. And uh, sometimes that feels impossible, like the uh, Frozen Chosen uh, talk that Tim Staples gave, where can you imagine being surrounded? It's an impossibility, right? And sometimes we feel like that in this culture, that it's, it's an impossibility. We're surrounded. Guys, with man, it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And if you're wondering who it is, it's you, here. We're the guys that are going to do this. And I'm so proud to be associated with you guys and with this group. And you need to come out, come out of here walking on water like Peter and saying, just when, when Jesus says come, you need to go. Okay, this is go time, guys. This is the time that we need to do it. So what did we do? I'm going to tell you how simple it is because you may be thinking, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can do this or not. I worked with middle school kids for 15 years. It was my calling from God. It's a very odd calling. Uh, some of you are like, yeah, I can't imagine. And I'm just going to tell you that it prepared me for working with you. That's why it was such a really good. Because <laughs> most of you haven't gotten above that 12-year-old uh, mentality. Uh, you still like flatulation jokes and things like that. So it's very easy for me to associate with men uh, and men's ministry. But the way that it the really, uh, really started at Good Shepherd was that I went to chirp. And I was busy Thursday nights. I couldn't come. Every Thursday night I had a school board meeting I had to go to. So I said, yeah, I'd really like to meet with these guys. I found some brothers and I really want to meet with them. And I happen to have keys to the church. That's the key. If you just <laughs> have keys to the church, it's fine. So I, had, I was a youth, youth minister at that time, part-time. And so I opened the door at 7 o'clock in the morning to see who would come. Six guys came. Now it's 60. You know, you know what it's like t t today to hear 700 voices together praying the rosary. How about 60 each week? How about 50? Would you like that? 10, five, even, even 10 or 15. Um, the way that that happened was, was I got youth ministry, uh, got, brought me from one church to the other. In the previous church, you see, it wasn't me who thought this up and thought all these good ideas. I didn't create. I just imitated. At St. Elizabeth and Keller, who's here today, they've got a big group here. Where, where are you guys at? All right, awesome. There's a group called Covenant Keepers over there that started. And when we started it, 
it was five or six guys and it grew to 30 or 40 guys. It's the same idea. And that one, a lot of guys there don't know, but that started at a men's conference that we had where the brothers were called like this. You can't leave here and leave this and not do something. This is go time. You know, we pick up the wounded and we carry them with us. It may seem impossible to you. I don't have time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the knowledge. Folks, when I started with that ministry at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's, I was fighting about Mary. I, I could, it's taken our focus off Jesus. And then I read the words and, and know this weekend from Tim Staples. Jesus is on the cross at the pinnacle of his ministry. And he says, behold your mother. He says, turn away from me at the pinnacle of my ministry and look at her. Because she will give us graces through her. And so now I kneel when I pray the rosary. And the rosary is that, that great valuable weapon. So you can be where you're at now and start the group. That's the whole point. Just be hungry to get that, to get that message. And um, that's how we started. So it started at a men's conference. That's how we started a good shepherd. We want to trace it back. A lot of guys don't know that. How can we help? We want to help. So now we're involved in the mission of, well, can we come to your parish, please? Let, sign up at this table back here. We will call you, contact you, set up times when we can come, up, come over there with a group of men and teach you how to start. You don't have to create, just imitate. Okay? You know, it says, follow me. You don't have to make up the whole thing. Just, we're, we're going to help you with that. So make sure that you sign it up on there and uh, sign up over there. Let us come visit, help you develop a plan. Let us help you with that. Um, and, and you can you can use that. So um, let's not worry about the blame and that kind of stuff. Let's imitate Peter and say, to whom else shall we go? To, to, we should go to Jesus. And how often should we do that? As often as we can with the men around us to strengthen us, to give us courage. When I said, are you stronger now? You said, amen. You're more courageous now. You said, amen. Do you want to continue that? You say, Amen. <laughs> Great. And then come over to the table. We'll keep that going. And um, I just appreciate you all being here and, and trying to be those disciples. I'm going to introduce uh, Paul Mahoney, who is the uh, president of uh, North Texas Catholic Men's uh, Fellowship. And he's going to uh, close us out with a little bit about discipleship. Thank you.